that summer came around and I pretty much knew that I wasn't going to be able to go there. What do you think about sending him to East Mississippi, getting him eligible to play ball there, but he just finished his high school. So all this kind of happened real fast. Um, I knew it happened fast for me uh, because we weren't expecting that. So I know for Shannon Brown, being in Adel, Georgia, his whole life in a small town, and then all of a sudden he's gone and he's gone to Mississippi where he has no clue where he even is. And, and uh, Scuba, Mississippi, there's not a whole lot but East Mississippi Community College. Yeah, East Mississippi, you know, it's, that was on Last Chance U. It was uh, it's one of the, probably one of the best junior colleges out there, still not one of the best. But they do a good job getting kids to Division I. And it's called Last Chance U for a reason because a lot of those kids don't have any more chances. And this was Shannon's first chance right here to go to East Mississippi and do that. They sent me to East Mississippi Community College and school's easy, football's easy. Um, get homesick. Wanna transfer to Georgia Military College, make the calls, talk to the people. And I had a few people in my ear, Todd Grantham, the defense coordinator at the time for University of Georgia, along with a couple people from around ADL that I looked up to that um, helped me. But at the end of the day, it was my decision, and I was I was I was homesick. And in the process of transferring, I talked to the coaching staff over there at East Mississippi. And Buddy Stevens told me that if I transfer, if I leave East Mississippi, I'm gonna leave a bill behind. He's gonna bill me. I'm just homesick. I wanna leave. Um, and he uh, he told me, if you leave, you gonna, this is gonna be the worst decision you ever make in your life. I know he meant if you leave here, I'm going to do what I got to do to make sure it's the worst decision you ever made in your life. So, without my knowledge, Shannon signs a letter of intent with Georgia Military. I'm still upset with Coach Grantham, by the way, about this because I thought we almost ruined the kid's eligibility for this. For this. And when you sign two letters of intent, when Shannon signed that other one and faxed it in to Georgia Military, now you have two contracts right there, which is supposed to take a year of eligibility away. East Mississippi, out of their goodness, they didn't have to do this, um, said if we get our money for our, for our school, for where he went to school right here, which is about $4,600 to $4,800, we'll let him out, no problem. We won't, we won't turn him in, we won't do anything like that. I leave. I go on to Georgia Military College. School is going good. Ball is going good. Ball is going great. Well, if you knew Shannon Brown back in the day, you knew that he was not an early morning riser, okay? Shannon had no problem with the school, had no problem and did well and was doing very well football-wise. He wouldn't go to the military part in the morning. He just didn't show up. I got kicked off the team, kicked out of school. I, I actually tore my shoulder up at George Military College. I wouldn't even go to get my shoulder seen out. Wasn't going to see the personal trainer, wasn't going to practice, wasn't going to school. Just wasn't doing nothing at that time. But when you don't do the military part at the morning, the formation, the marching, in uniform, and you gotta be on time, and that's that discipline part, you can't be a part of this program. So they kicked him out of there. So there goes Georgia Military. I get kicked out of Georgia Military College. I come back home, go to call around, trying to get in another school. My cousin Thad Williams, I talked to him because he went to Hutchison. First time I'm hearing from Coach Rose, he was telling me to get a plane ticket. Get out of here as soon as you can. I did, went out there. School's going good, football's going great again. Got a new start. I really, really felt comfortable with him being at Hutchison since so many Cook kids had been there. And even after Shannon, you know, Shannon sent me video of him. They, we, we, I could watch him at practice sometimes. So I'd be at school, I'd pop it on the computer and I could watch him practice. Sometimes they had cameras right there that were linked so I could watch that. In the middle of spring ball, Coach called me in his office. Coach Rose called, called me in his office and say, um, you're gonna have to take care of this bill before the semester is out or 
we ain't gonna be able to bring you back to Hutchinson next next term. I'm like, okay. So I call around, tell people back home what just happened. Coach Kofa was one of them. Um, Coach Kofa, a week or two rolled by, called me and say, I paid the bill for you. You ain't gotta worry about that no more. Just play football and go to school. Still practicing, still playing, still going to school. Everything's going good. Um, he called me into the office again. Georgia Military College put a bill on you for $4,500, $4,700, one or the other. I didn't do the same thing I did, that I did at Georgia Military College. I kept going to school. My grades was good. Football was good. I just put a plan together this time. Okay, I'll go home, work. After the semester was over with, went home, worked at Steel Building Systems for the amateurs who was there the whole time. They was, they was, they was my help throughout this whole process as well. Coach Rose told me, told me and Thad, you get the money, call me, come back. End of the summer roll around, got the money. Calling Coach Rose, texting Coach Rose, got Thad calling him and texting him. We never heard from him. To this day, I never heard from him. Thad never heard from him. And him and Thad was like this. I thought Nassau Community College up in New York. They do the same thing, call me. Tell me to get here fast as you can. See, a lot of times, them coaches will tell you to get here fast as you can, not knowing or caring about your situation because the longer you're out there, the, the more likely it is that another coach will call you and swoop you right from up under their nose. So get here fast as you can. We'll answer all your questions and you answer our questions when you get here. I get up there. Um, <laughs> Find out that it wasn't nothing like the, the the recruiting pitch that they was giving me. Um, I didn't know that I was gonna have to pay for everything at the school, including housing. I get a call probably whew, day one day, one day, and he said, "Coach, I didn't make it to the house. I had to sleep in the parking lot with another football player at a, at the local Walmart." Well, we're talking about New York in the dead of winter, okay? I sleep outside. I don't, I don't get a room because I don't know. I really don't, I'm really lost at this, at this. Right now, I don't know what's going on. I've probably sat down with the coach for 15, 20 minutes and all he's told me is, first thing you need to do is find somewhere to stay. Something happens the next day and he's in that parking lot again. And this is when I speak to Danny and Teresa Emmerich. And uh, we gotta get him out of there. And I don't know those coaches at Nassau didn't. I talked to him probably once or twice. Shannon was the one that had the relationship with them. They didn't know where he was. So now you got a little South Georgia town boy that's up there in New York and he has no clue about anything. So it scared me. It scared the Emmerichs right there because they looked after Shannon quite a bit, Danny and Teresa, and they, they did a great job with him as, as a lot of athletes at Cook High School. I called the Emmerichs, and what we tried to do was drive back home, me and the guy. We ended up running into the Atlantic Ocean. So we know we're going the wrong way, you know? I called again, hey, we lost. Now I don't feel comfortable going back home with this guy. They told me, get to the closest airport. Whatever airport you see, go to it. We'll get you home. While at the airport, I call Eastern Arizona. Hey, I'm finna go back home. This New York situation didn't work out. They said, no, come to Arizona. I got there and got back into my ways. Everything was, they, what, they didn't have, what discouraged me a little bit is I had been to three of the top five junior colleges in the nation. East Mississippi won championship. Georgia Military won NAS championship. Hutchinson Community College won NAS championship. All within this time of me doing all this moving around. I didn't know nothing about Eastern Arizona. You know, they facilities wasn't a par with those other schools that I named. Um, just nothing looked good, but it was a great situation to be in. Um, 
got lost. Yeah, that's when I got out there and I went to smoking, um, drinking, smoking weed, mar marijuana. Um, got in trouble maybe three or four times, ran from the police behind sitting behind some apartment smoking weed police walk up behind walk up behind us hey so we me and two three other players cut out running got away but the coaches knew who i was the, the when the police described me to the coaches <clears throat> they said yeah that's that's shannon <laughs> that's shannon i pretty much blew eastern arizona at that point in time I just didn't love it no more like I did at one time. And I was willing to throw it away for stupid stuff, you know? It just really wasn't, it wasn't, the, it felt like it wasn't fun no more, you know? Everything that was going on around it, just running into bad people. Um, the business side of college football is treacherous. Like it was one time, that I would do anything a coach told me to do to play football. But when I got to Arizona and, you know, they would say things like, I was told one time to, I had, I came to practice late at Eastern Arizona and um, I was told to roll the length of the football field back and forth until I threw up. And I told them I wasn't doing it. But at one point in time, I would have did that to play football. I said, no, nah, I ain't doing that. And I went back to my dorm room. And that played a role in me getting kicked out of there. He was a semester there. Um, and I get a call from Danny and Teresa Emmerich. Hey, we're meeting him at the airport. Shannon wants to get back and, get, and be baptized. And I'm thinking, awesome. So I didn't even tell him that I was coming. I just showed up at the church. He looked different. I don't know how to explain it. He just, he looked different. You know, I'm, I'm planning on taking him out to a nice dinner, probably taking him to a steakhouse at the baptism. And he says, coach, I don't, I don't want to go. He said, just, just take me to, uh, I don't care. I think it was Wendy's. Just take me to Wendy's. I want a hamburger. And I said, okay. He just seemed distant. Um, I didn't know what it was. I just thought, well, he's been away from home for a while. He looked, he looked slim. He looked skinny to Shannon, you know, is not skinny. It's just, you know, he just looked different. Um, and he just looked like very distant to me. And it's, you know, wasn't being ugly to me or anything like that. He was just very distant. And I remember taking him home and that's the last time I really uh, spoke to him, just to be honest with you. Uh, because I find out about two weeks later, I get a call from one of the GAs, uh, one of the graduate assistants at Eastern Arizona. And, uh, says, Coach, I, I just want to call and let you know that we can't have Shannon back. I remember the conversation like yesterday. And I said, what's going on? And he said, Coach, I, they told me to call you. That's, that's all I can tell you. And I said, OK. I said, Bud, you can't, you can't get somebody to call me and tell me what's going on because this has happened at one other school. And I'm out of options. And this kid's future's you know, in jeopardy right here. And I said, I, I have no other options to get him anywhere. And he said, coach, he just, he's, he's smoking and he's not doing some good things. And it's so much that it's become a problem and that's become the number one thing. And uh, I said, okay. And at that point we couldn't, I, we kind of, Shannon and I kind of butted heads a little bit about things. He knew I was hurt, let's just say that. He knew I was hurt by everything. The, the graduate assistant said that his head coach, had why the head coach didn't call me, I have no idea. But the graduate assistant had to do the dirty work. He said, our head coach said that we would try to help him get somewhere else. Well, by this time, the word's gotten out. Right. And when you start telling people that Shannon Brown has been to five junior colleges and probably a semester, no more than two semesters at one school, people start talking and they want to know why. Things churned through his mind and he couldn't, he couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel to, to get where he needed to go. And I think, it, I think it wore on him. I think it broke him a little bit mentally. And, uh, you know, so as, as much as I say that, you know, we supported him, 
we, we couldn't be there with him the whole time. I do think life would have changed if he'd have stepped on foot on Alabama. There's no doubt in my mind. I definitely should have swallowed the pill at East Mississippi. I mean, I would have knew I wasn't playing for a good guy, but he was a great coach, to me, my opinion. Right. You know, knowing that with the situation that he told me, if you stay, you're good. If you leave, worst decision you ever made. I could have stayed. I had a 3.0, a 3.0 GPA at East Mississippi. I come to Adel, and go back to the only thing I know, other than football. Football was my way out, but once football was gone, I didn't have to go looking for drugs or the dope man or none of that, you know. He was across the street the whole time I've been playing football. I just tried to stay away from him. But now that football is over, I'm gonna go over there, you know. I go from using to selling.